Hey everybody, Danny Moore here. Thanks for joining us. This week, I want to talk about how do you stop topping your fairway woods, whether that's a five wood, a three wood, a seven wood, or your hybrids, those top shots where you hit a ball at the top of the golf ball, and rather than the ball get hit this beautiful flight up in the air, instead, it looks something like this. A blatant top that literally flies along the ground. So frustrating. I'm gonna give you the number one reason that causes this particular top shot. I'm gonna give you a three-step process to simply get rid of it and really learn the feel of how to get rid of it. Before I get into the training though, if you're new to the channel, and this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button next to the subscribe button and you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. So, top shots, what's happening? Well, let's, let's just talk about initially what's happening um, at the moment of impact. Well, if you're topping the golf ball, the ball here is striking the bottom edge of that golf club. You're not hitting any part of the face. So we've got to figure out why. Why are you hitting down here? The number one reason why you're hitting the bottom part is a lack of space, which brings us on to the first step process. I had a recent client of mine, uh, Brian, who comes to see me, and I don't agree with quick fixes, by the way. So there's, this is why I'm going to give you a process here. There's a process to get rid of a top. There's not just one magic cure. The first step uh, when Brian came to me, he was topping his woods, was I needed to get him flowing. Because he'd been topping his woods, he'd been, so hard, he'd been trying so hard to strike the golf ball that what was happening was he'd get over the golf ball like this and he was staying really still. His intention was, I want to strike that golf ball. Now the problem is, is that's not the game we play. We play the game of golf. The game of golf is hitting towards a target. The byproduct of hitting towards a target is we play golf and we have a golf swing. When you start to kind of concentrate on, or, uh, concentrate on striking the ball properly, what you end up doing, your focus is here. The message you're sending to your brain therefore is, I'm gonna swing back, I'm gonna hit this ball. Now the problem is, the body doesn't move. Everything's still. Why? Because that's really subconsciously what you've told it to do. There's the ball lying on the deck. You've swung back. You've simply hit at the golf ball. There's no space. This club is long. There's no space. So the body kind of thinks, what do I do here? I don't want to hurt myself by dramming into the ground. So it stands up. It can stand up. As you stand up, you hit the bottom part of the club. You can, I've seen people do this. They buckle. They get these chicken wings as well. All of it is your body's genius at not hurting yourself. So step one in this process, and the first stage, doesn't necessarily eliminate the top straight away, but it's the first step, is I got Brian to say, look, goal number one is you've got to add some flow to what you're doing. Now I've mentioned this many times in many of my videos because it's generic and I feel it's just so important. You've got to let your arms hang, you've got to be relaxed. Very difficult when you've been topping it, okay? You're trying really hard, you're trying really hard to get better, so there's a lot of tension there. You've got to let these arms relax and remember, where are we going? To the target. So what we want to do is you want to practice just allowing and throwing the arms to the target, like spaghetti here, backwards and forwards. As we do this, what do you notice now about my body? It starts to naturally rotate and go through, and that's what I want you to be doing, flowing through to your target. Now watch, if you start to allow this club to flow through to your target, because that's in your intent, it's drawing the swing out, your body creates the space, which means you don't have to stand up. That is goal number one. So you make a few swings where all you're going to do here is this. You're going to practice, almost imagine that when you've hit the golf ball, your golf club would literally, you're almost going to throw the golf club down towards a target. Very different to throwing the club at the golf ball. Does that make sense? So imagine this. It's almost like we'd hit the ball here and if we were going to let go, the club would literally fly down to the target. So we'll start with that as, as step number one. So back here and away we go. Now, this really helped the natural flow of Brian, but it didn't eliminate all his top shots. There, so we bring him on to step number two. So he's adding flow. He's now, he's still finding it tricky not to focus on that golf ball because it's, it's kind of, he's desperate to strike it. The second thing that we need to do is, is his practice swings got nowhere near the golf ball. So, if you want to, um, what you see with a lot of people who top the ball, they do two things. They're literally often making practice swings and they're above the ground. 
And when they get to the golf ball, they wonder why then they top it. So the second thing I want you to do is this. When you're, um, when you're hitting a fairway wood, we want a very shallow angle. We want to be gliding the club through the impact area. We don't want to be getting at the golf ball in any shape or form, because our bodies will respond there. My, I don't want to hurt myself and stand up. We want to get a gliding motion through the turf. So now what we're going to do, watch this. I'm going to imagine I'm going to go down the fairway. That's going to draw this beautiful flowing motion out. Simultaneously, I'm going to be trying to get the, the face or the bottom part of the golf club gliding along the surface. And I can hear this glide, but sometimes I might do this and hear nothing at all. That would be a top shot. Sometimes I might hear this and that's too steep coming down into it. So I just make some moves as I'm swinging through and I'm trying to calibrate the sound. And then I get myself set back and through and away we go that becomes step two and this really relates to um, when I was learning to ski when I was learning to ski the first thing you do as a beginner skier is you just fear you look down at your skis and the first thing you, you don't want to kind of fall over so you're looking down and you fall because of that my great uh, ski instructor uh, said Look at the view. Look where you're going. I don't want to look where I'm going. I'm going to, I'm going to fall over. How does this relate to golf? Well, when I'm skiing, is, is I'm simultaneously doing two things. I'm looking where I'm going while simultaneously feeling what I'm doing with my skis. I'm listening to the sound of the snow. What you do have to do is you don't look down at the ball and think, I've got to hit the ball. That's like crashing and skiing. You have to figure, feel out where you're going because that creates this natural flowing motion while simultaneously getting a sense of how that club is interacting with the ground as you're doing it. That is absolutely crucial. What can aid this is one, the third and final tip, which I actually got from a friend of mine, Matt Fryer, you catch him on YouTube. Great little tip actually, is what you can do is put a tee peg just in front of the golf ball here. This is just for practice. So I'm going to set up here just behind the golf ball here. And what I like about this tip here, what we're doing is the tee peg's about three to uh, four to six inches in front of the golf ball. We want a gliding impact through. I'll, remember this, a lot of people that top the golf ball, they get stuck here. They're either missing the ground completely. They get stuck here. So what I like about this is I like to reverse engineer the process. What we're going to do is we're going to slide. We want the, uh, the club to ground out and hit that tee. And almost, look where I'm finishing. Look where my arms are here. They're finishing here. They're not finishing here or here. So what we do is we do a few exercises, put the club four to six inches behind the ball, make some swings now. We're flowing to the target, and now we've got some brilliant feedback in that tee. Watch this. I'm just there. Look, I'm extending out here. I'm throwing the club. I'm hearing that noise through the impact area here. Look at the difference in, in slow motion. The extension here through. Toppers never finish here. They always finish somewhere like this. So you get that feedback, four, six inches. Listen to that sound of that tee. Now we've got the sound, we've got a bit of feedback. We've, we can take that feeling, take the club up, get this, get set here, and then away we go. Nice and simple. Let's have another look at that in slow motion. So three things for you there. One of the keys that factors is this. You want to get rid of your top shots. You've kind of, you're doing it the right, you, you've been doing it kind of possibly the wrong way. You've been trying to strike the golf ball. Striking the golf ball, leave for a second. The first thing you've got to do is allow a flowing motion. That is how actually you strike a golf ball. You have to have a golf swing, not a swing that goes at a golf ball. That's not playing golf. So we start to add this flow. Then what we do, while we're adding the flow, we simultaneously start to get the club gliding through 
the ground. When you miss the ground, you can get some feedback. To aid this entire process, put a tee peg on the practice ground, maybe six inches in front of the golf ball, and imagine the club striking the ball and then continuing to glide and actually strike the tee peg here, backwards and forwards. Reverse engineer the process. You can do this almost if you wanted it as part of your practice swing. You could think, okay, I want to get to about this position here. No problem. Very different to that position. And then swing. So reverse engineer that entire process. But that is a three-step process that we use to get Brian really, really striking his fairwoods consistently. Hope you enjoyed the training. If you did and you know somebody who's struggling to strike their woods, whether it's their fairwoods or their hybrids, successfully, please share it. It really, really helps. And of course, enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, come and join the community by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. But until next week, have a great golfing week.